Warriors, my friends, my extended family, welcome to another important video on my channel. Thanks for joining me. And if you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, please go ahead and subscribe. And if you know anybody out there who's suffering from an anxiety disorder, please share some of my videos or my channel with them. My friends, in this video, I decided let's take a different approach. Okay, let's go back in time to find and share Dennis's old anxiety recovery journal and some of the most important points, some of the most important moments of clarity that I gained during my anxiety recovery journey. Okay, now you right now are going through it. Maybe you're at the beginning stages where you're trying to gather some information, some knowledge, you're starting to get some guidance from other people, okay? Or maybe you're in the middle where things are getting messy, you're experiencing some wins and some progress, but there always seems to be something that's holding you back from, from true healing and inner peace. And maybe you're at the end of the anxiety recovery journey where you feel like most of your day, you're going through your day with a certain degree of ease. There's an effortlessness, there's an enjoyment, there's a gratitude, right? So no matter where you are on the anxiety recovery healing journey, these points from my old journal will definitely speak to you, okay? So I'm excited to share some of these with you guys, okay? First point that I wanna share with you is I realized that your inner child, or I was speaking to myself, your inner child wants you to believe that you are solely the body, okay? If you suffer from health anxiety or even generalized anxiety or panic or whatever it is, your own inner child or ego or shadow, whatever you wanna call it, wants you to believe that you are solely the body. Okay, when I realized this and I put it in my notes and in my journal, it was a real wake up call because I was going through my day completely fixated on my body. Okay, which part of my body was at ease and wasn't yelling symptom or sensation or potential disease or illness, and which part of my body was feeling tension, pressure, and experiencing anxiety symptoms, right? always fixated on the body and and I realized that this wasn't really me in my new identity that was fixated on my body right it was this inner child me that wanted me to believe that I was the body so that I stayed in a state of fight or flight I stayed in the sympathetic system activation for more often throughout the day in order to be prepared, okay? Prepared for an imminent threat. And so you need to realize that this isn't really you, but this is part of a system that is based around protection and it's based around suppression of those feelings and it wants to hold on to belief systems that came from your childhood, okay? So this isn't you. When you feel like you're fixated on the body, you need to recognize that this is coming from a part of you, but it isn't you, okay? Number two thing I realized when I wrote down on my journal was that your inner child wants you to believe that you are the sole doer, okay? Hence the enormous pull towards doership, okay? Your inner child wants you to believe that only you and your push and your motivation and your willpower. Only you can solve the problems that you're experiencing. So when you feel like you are the sole doer, you feel a tremendous amount of pressure on yourself. And you don't really trust in life, right? You don't really trust in life, nor do you have faith in the future. You feel like because I'm the sole doer and there isn't some sort of an energy out there that may contribute and help me with the direction I want to go. When you feel that this is the case, 
then you are also going through your life based around what the inner child wants you to believe about life, okay? So you are not the sole doer. When you feel that this is the case, you want to take a step back and reevaluate. You want to reevaluate the way you're doing things, okay? But not only that, you want to reevaluate your entire mindset towards life. Because whether it's an anxiety symptom, whether it's the fact that you want to be financially free, financially free, whether it's the fact that you want to rebuild new relationships, whatever it is, okay, with that desire, okay, or goal, you have to have a sense that there is some sort of energy out there that can, if in fact you trust in it, can help bring you towards the information and knowledge you need to fulfill that desire. So take the pressure off. You are not the sole doer, okay? And you don't have to live in a place where you're always pushing, always pushing, always hoping, always forcing, always fighting. This doesn't have to be you, okay? Step back, reevaluate. Number three important notes from my own anxiety recovery journal was that the ego slash inner child, because for me, ego, inner child, shadow, pretty much mean the same thing, says, I must do more and achieve more than that person, right? So you're going through your day and you recognize that on social media, there's that one person who's, you know, doing more and looks a bit happier than you and enjoying their family time more. And you're going, oh, that can't be the case. I have to do better. I have to be happier. I have to have more fun. I have to be freer. I have to make more money. I have to, I have to, right? This needs some recognition and evaluation. Okay, we need to reflect on this because what's gonna happen if you continue to live in this world of I have to do better than the next person, you will live with anxiety on a daily basis and then you'll be confused as to why you have anxiety, <laughs> right? This was the case for me until I got to a place where I said, I don't know what that other person is really going through. Just because I see a picture, or just because I see that person smiling here or there or being more successful than me, doesn't really bring me to the reality of what that person may be going through, okay? Therefore, I have to stop evaluating myself based on what I see in other people, okay? I have to stop doing this. I have to stop comparing myself to other people's lives. And this is you. You have to stop comparing yourself to other people. Of course, the more time we spend scrolling on social media, the more difficult it gets. And that's a habit that we have to replace with something that provides us with more ease and inner peace. Remember, when you're going through anxiety, your sympathetic system, your fight or flight is highly activated, okay? And I wanna give you a little bit of a tip here as a sidebar, my friends, okay? Breathe through your nose, okay? When you find that you're starting to compete with other people, when you find that a memory pops up and, and so on, get yourself to a place where you're breathing through your nose and both nostrils because the left nostril is connected to the parasympathetic, the right nostril is connected to the sympathetic, and when you breathe through your nose, you're balancing out those two systems. So the moment you find yourself comparing yourself, and I have to do better than the next person, more often than not, you start to breathe in a very shallow manner, hyperventilate, and your perceptions are coming from the inner child's perspectives, right? They're not really yours anymore. So breathe through your nose. In fact, you have to make this a habit throughout your entire day, okay? Number four, I said, Dennis, okay, and this may be the case for you, stop looking to hang on to what you have rather than take a chance on finding out what your true potentials are, okay? When I noted this, when I wrote it down in my journal, I was going, holy smokes, like, 
I was going through my day and there was a little bit of uh, inner peace or happiness or connection with other people there and I wanted to hold on to it for as long as I, I could, right? And I didn't want to take a chance. I didn't want to let go of those things, which tends to be the case with anxiety sufferers many times. They're afraid to take too big of a leap forward in their progress because they're afraid to lose what they have, okay? And what they have really isn't much, but when you get into a cycle, a pattern where it says, suppress everything, don't express yourself, don't take chances on life, don't take chances with people, don't take chances with your career, don't take chances and go on these trips and stuff, right? You start to feel like you're, you need more and more control over your life when in fact true control comes into your life when you give up control, okay? That's when you start to gain the kind of control that all of us are fighting for. So, Take a chance on life. Take a chance on this new identity you're building up. Take a chance on being playful. Take a chance on being curious. Take a chance on forgiving yourself. Take a chance on forgiving those people that did you wrong. Instead of looking for revenge on those people, bless them and hope the best for them, right? Take a chance on a perspective that is not familiar in your life. And if you do this, it may feel uncertain and, and the unknown may come with that. But the truth is, this is the test. This is the test. This is the challenge. These are the things that you must pass with flying colors in order to meet with a sense of ease and inner peace and overcome anxiety for good, okay? Number five, okay, we're getting to the end here. Your fears, when I wrote this down, big eye opener. Your fears are connected to habits, which are connected to how you've been unconsciously wiring the brain into thinking that everything poses a potential threat, right? When you have anxiety, everything is potentially threatening, right? You open the doors of your house, you take a step outside, and who knows what's going to happen. Maybe an eagle's going to swoop down and take out an eye. It feels like that. It feels like that all the time. But the truth is, is that eagle can swoop down, land beautifully on your head, and you can laugh at the same time, right? So the things that you used to th see as very threatening things, you can laugh at the irrational fear from now on, right? Because if you take yourself too seriously, it's very difficult to leave the realm. It's very difficult to leave the patterns of anxiety for good, right? So there has to be a sense of ease when it comes to your irrational fears. You have to look at those things and smile sometimes. You have to look at those things and say, boy, my inner child really loves me so unconditionally that it would go out of its way all the time to make me believe that something is a potential threat, right? So the things that pose as potential threats in your life are nothing more than things that you can laugh at and go, oh my God, for years I've been playing this game of thinking that I am in danger somehow, but the truth is, is that I'm in no danger and I can be how I want to be. And the truth is, you don't have to be the same person that you were 10 minutes ago. You don't have to be that person. If you're listening to this right now and 10 minutes ago you experienced a state of anxiousness and stress, you can look at those same stressors in a different manner. You can look at them and go, wow, that's how I used to see that. And you don't have to see those same things in the same way that you did 10 minutes ago, my friends. You have permission starting today to be whoever you want to be and to believe whatever you want to believe about this life experience, okay? And because that's the case, when you take a chance on this new identity, when you take a chance on giving inner peace a chance and letting go, 
and letting things be sometimes and trusting that things are going to work out the way they need to, then things tend to work out in the best ways. But when we fight to control things, when we fight to keep things the way they are, they tend to fall apart. And what I don't want is for your life to fall apart, that's for sure. I love you all from the bottom of my heart. Did any of these points speak to you? If they did, please comment below because I want to hear from you. This isn't just me, you know, filling you with knowledge and wisdom. It's about you filling me with your knowledge and wisdom as well. So comment below. And if you have any other questions on any of my anxiety recovery programs, head over to theanxietyguide.com today. You are more than anxiety. Don't ever forget it. I'll see you soon.